Hello, hello. We are hello. live. Always takes a second for us to show that we're live. But um, yeah, we're talking about our historical Hellions book pick, Thunder and Roses by what's her name? Mary Jo Mary, Mary Jo Petty. There we go. My brain froze for a second. Oh, oh you pretty I, I don't know where my physical copy is, as always. How did you guys come with a decision to pick this book? Okay, so Desiree asked, because before I had read it, she had said the synopsis, and I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense now. Like, I remember briefly reading the synopsis, and then she's like, don't you read the synopsis before you pick the book? And I was like, no. (laughs) This is what we look at when we buy books. (laughs) Okay, okay. We try to pick, like, an author that has, you know, written before the 90s that's fairly popular, and then we just pick, like, a good rating on Goodreads. Like, we'll look on Goodreads and be like, oh, that was a four-star rating, like, average. That sounds good to us. Uh, we don't actually read the synopsis for the books that we pick, which maybe isn't the smartest choice, but... <laughs> no. But a lot of well, people recommended Mary Jo Putney. Our next three picks yeah. were ones that, like, the chat has recommended, so y'all okay, can blame for next one. If you don't like them. Yeah. Justin, this- hello. Hi, Justin. Hello. Hello. Christy. I read Justin and Christie's review on Goodreads, so I already know what your ratings are. <laughs> what are just, what's Justin's review? <laughs> Justin rated it four stars. Oh, what? And I think Christy rated it four as well, or maybe she I rated it 3. five. Yeah, I was like, maybe it was a 3.5. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we'll go around and kind of say how we read the book and what rating we... Oh, I'm so excited for the batch. I'm so excited. I have a next one. <laughs> this better not let us down. Yeah, you'll have to tell me how that goes. <laughs> um, okay, so I read the ebook for Thunder and Roses. I couldn't find my physical copy. Didn't feel like paying $7 for the audiobook. And I gave it a, a low three star. It wasn't horrible, not, you know, the worst one we've picked, but it definitely wasn't my favorite. Um, it reminded me a lot, and Justin said this in his um, review, it reminded me so much of Flowers from the Storm, but I liked that one better. So... Uh, Desiree. <laughs> uh, so I DNF'd it at 25% because it was going to put me into a reading slump and I felt really bad about it. And I called Sam and everything. I felt really bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if I were to rate it, it would be like a really low three because the writing is really good and I can see why people would like her as an author, but this just was not my type of plot um, going in. So I just, I was all resistant. It was not for me. Low three. Low three. Okay. Lisa? Um, And then for me, I listened to the audiobook and I listened it to up to like probably 80% before the last 20%. I just kind of like was bored to tears. Um, So (laughs) overall, it was a three out of five for me, but also a very low three. I think three is being very generous on my part and then this book also reminded me a lot like a Teresa Medeiros book which is called A Kiss to Remember and it's like similar plot lines where she has to save um her siblings by marrying someone rich so it was kind of like similar vibes interesting and he also like the hero in that Teresa Medeiros books is also very cold and callous and does not care about anybody except for himself so it reminded me a lot like this one Hmm. Jessica? I did the audio and I will admit I ran out of time. However, I probably am not going to finish it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I got 75% of the way through. So I am, um, what, nine hours, 10 hours into the 13 hour audio. I'm pretty far. And like I was listening, I bumped it up to 3.3 speed too, because I was so bored. (laughs) And, uh, And I never do that. I can still, like, figure out what they're saying, but yeah. I literally was listening, like, from seven to eight straight. I was listening to it, and I was like, nothing, nothing's happened. Like, yeah, yeah. there's no plot. And so, I don't know what kind of reminds me how I feel about Mary Balog is, like, hers mm. really don't have a plot, and they're pretty boring, and that's the vibe I was getting from this. I read another one of hers that was Amnesia, and I liked it, but I was like, they went to a mine. They had a yeah. ball. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, that's where I got. They went to the mine, and I was like, nothing is happening, and I just don't 
care. That was the fun part, though. Like, and then it almost caved in on them, and then there was like a dead body floating next to them, and then but it that was, was already drowning. I. <laughs> The plot didn't seem unbelievable to me. I feel like marriage of convenience or that kind of like the beginning of her like making the deal with him for their town or whatever. Like I feel like that's a very historical romance thing. But there was there a marriage of convenience? It wasn't really marriage of convenience like situ like she was like, you know, trying like to bargain deal. herself like a deal. Right. Yeah. And there's always deals. Which, that happens in My Darling Duke that reminded me of that where like he mm -hmm. was like a uh someone who they thought was like super violent and scary and then he's like spend time with me at my estate so right <clears throat> yeah so i feel like for a historical romance it it was you know the plot itself wasn't super bonkers compared to other ones that we've read before <clears throat> i loved flowers of the storm i i think uh i was the only one in that live show who loved it um because it does lean very historical fiction and i feel like this one was similar but not as good if that makes sense <laughs> Um, but similar in the way that, I mean, they were both, um, Methodist and mm -hmm. <clears throat> we had a grumpy, grumpy hero in the beginning. Uh, there was another one. Oh yeah. Justin said it's leaning very historical fiction. Yeah. Which I think like, yeah, I'm like, yay, mine. Like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yes. I do feel like the, the romance didn't really pick up till the end i thought the last few chapters were interesting like the conflict was interesting and their relationship was more sweet towards the end but a lot of it lacked a lot of romance mm, yeah hmm. somebody mentioned the penguins the penguins were the best part i don't remember mm -hmm. yeah did something um, else happen with the penguins i only got to the part where they were just like swimming with them in the um no it was, it was just oh, okay they did miss an opportunity not putting some penguins on that step back Oh yeah, <laughs> great. It was long. It was a long book. Mm -hmm. Did you mention the show earlier, Desiree? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and I loved the first season of Pole Dark. It's super good. I'd recommend it to anybody. But once you get to season two, his character as like a romance reader, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't like him because he does cheat on his wife because. The whole plot is that he's come back from war. His fiance has married his cousin or whatever. And now he's like, well, since he's uh, married the woman that I'm in love with or whatever, I'm just going to be off from like my little estate and um, not marry anybody and then help out the poor. And he ends up marrying a poor woman. Uh, and he cheats on her with said fiance that he was supposed to marry before, <laughs> before he went off to war. And it's just, it's this whole That's drama. I did not like it. <laughs> But but the actor is really attractive. <laughs> it's really attractive. So season one's good. No, I got to the skinny dipping part. That's what I meant when they were when they were swimming. Oh, the strip billiard part though, where they were like, you miss, <laughs> they gotta take off a uh, like your sock, and then you miss, you gotta take off your shoe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not strip billiards. No, I didn't get that far. Yeah, I got there. <laughs> <laughs> oh did anyone you listen to the audiobook just what was there a, like a welsh or wales accent or whatever accent it is she was welsh no 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 it was just yeah, he was missed yeah. opportunity yeah i mean because it's third person i mean i don't think any of their i don't think they had accents um except for like his accent yeah right lisa you read listen to audio right the audio, like the audiobook narrator, I hated him. Like, he oh, was I just, thought he was fine. Ah, no, I just, I don't know. It sounded like I don't, it just didn't sound good. And I was just like, it was he, mid, it wasn't the best British yeah. narrator I've ever heard. Yeah. And he made me <laughs> want to turn it off faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did get together very fast, yeah. which I know guess is like a pet peeve of yours. I mean, that was the bargain, though, not like where you love each other. So I was True. okay with that. I don't think they said they love each other until like the f like second to last chapter or like the third to last chapter. I did like though how everybody thought that he was sleeping with his grandfather's wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, she's a is she Methodist? Is that yeah. What she's yeah. And then she's trying to like help her town, and she ends up going to him to, for him to like help the town as a bargain he says that she has to like pretend to be his mistress for three months is it three months mm -hmm. and kiss yeah. him every day 
Uh, and he thinks like she's not going to do it, but she does end up doing it and it follows their romance. He is Romani, so you get to see a lot of that. You get to see the mines and um, yeah, the ending was kind of, I don't know, predictable. It was a very villainous like character, like mwahaha, like twisting muscle <laughs> type of villain. But um, it was all right. It wasn't the worst historical romance I read. It was just not the best. It was like mid. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. I mean, but like coming after Vivid, I'm just like, oh, Vivid was good. I wasn't in the live show, but I loved that book. But Beverly Jenkins, you cannot compare like at all. <laughs> books are always going to be just that extra bit of amazing. Yeah. But even what was the one we read before? Because I feel like that one had a fun plot. The first book that we read this month or January? What did we read um, in January? February. Oh, we read Reckless by Amanda Quick. That oh, was fun. That was fun. But again, Amanda Quick does like those adventure feeling romances. That's what I want. So that when <laughs> I get to this end, I'm like, wow, this is so boring. They're just like sitting around. <laughs> just Wasn't that like a duel at the end though? It was. Like, that was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it I got guess very Indiana Jonesy. Mm -hmm. And like when they like left the burning house to like climb on the tree, it felt that felt like an action movie and very yeah. unrealistic. Because, like, if you had a gun, you could just, like, shoot up. But this way. I didn't know, like, you could choose your... I thought it was always, like, a sword or a gun. I didn't know, like, a whip was an option for duels. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I don't know, because they're not Indiana Jones. Like, who's bringing a whip? <laughs> yeah. Apparently the hero was really good at whipping things, so... No, if you think about the time frame, though, the guns itself were very dangerous, a lot of them would explode and ricochet yeah. to the person who's shooting it. So actually, the whip was a smart move. Yeah, but okay. the sword was right there. Yeah, it was true. <laughs> you know. She had to do something different. She had to spice it up because it wasn't getting boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was It was good, it just not not the best. But, yeah. like, I read historical romances for the romance. <laughs> I don't need yeah. yeah, I think that is also part of my problem with this book, too, is that it just, I wasn't feeling their romance either. Aside from, because I'll read books where, like, absolutely nothing happens, but I'm so into it because I like the yeah. romance with the characters. But this one, I wasn't feeling anything in the 25% that I read. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> this is where I usually well dnf books though on um if it's just me like if i don't like it by that point i just move on to the next book or else i'm going to go into a reading self and i don't want that yeah yeah i think he turned like too kind and considerate very early on after he made like the bargain he just went like really nice and i was just like i wanted enemies to lovers i wanted you to be mean but you were not mean so i guess i'll like you being nice yeah, it was more like friends to lovers after the bargain because they yeah. became friends and then they fell for each other. Yeah. And like the wedding was so anticlimactic. Like they slept together and he's like, oh, you could be pregnant. Let's get married. <laughs> <laughs> and like the actual wedding was so boring. Like she was like, we got married on a Sunday. And that was that. Like, how <laughs> <laughs> Is that it's the end or or the before the end? Uh, a couple chapters before the end, like right before... So at the very end, the main conflict is their house gets set on fire when they're sleeping by Michael. And that's the like the day. Guy the villain. Is he the mustache yeah. really villain you're talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that happens like a week after they get married. Um, Doesn't the one being challenged get to pick a weapon? I don't know. It reminds me of the Hamilton song. Name a time and a place. They do get to pick the weapon, but I've never seen a whip as the weapon. <laughs> so, um, but I do love a good duel and a romance. Yeah. Right. I agree with this. Yeah, that's true. Mm, and like, he and was I was so mad about it. Oh, you go first. No, no, no. It's okay. Go ahead. Okay. And I was so mad about like how he made the deal with her in the beginning and he didn't even live up to that for me to feel like it made sense. Cause like, he was going to ruin her reputation and like not care about her at all. And then all of a sudden they're like bantering. Like that was mm -hmm. it. Like the next day mm -hmm. they're bantering. That was a little weird. Now that I thought I weird. skipped a few chapters or something when they became yeah. I was like, what? 
Yeah. So. The only reason he was jaded towards women was because his fiance like cheated on him, whatever. But I didn't feel like that was that dramatic. Okay, but we yeah. also didn't know that seventy five percent of the book. I was like, we still don't know what happened with you and your fiance. Yeah, she cheated it's on him. Annoying. That's it. That was it. She just How cheated she on him. Die? I don't remember. Like in a wagon accident or something like that. I don't remember how she... Okay, I just remember, like, she had rearranged his stuff and put a photo of her, a portrait of her, and then he got all mad and, like, cut it down. Yeah. With the whip. And then, when the heroine, like, <laughs> found out that she cheated on him, she was like, I hope she burns. And I was like, that's not very... Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying. That part was funny. See, the I last couple have- chapters did pick up a little bit. Like, a little bit. I just go and read the last two chapters. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't think... He- you'll miss out on anything for not finishing it but it was an interesting ending um it would have been more angsty if she tried to yeah we probably oh, Michael it. was in love with his fiance wife weren't they married i think they were married they were married mm-hmm. well, michael was in love with her is because that's what cheryl yeah. said um she cheated on him with so many people he did Mm. Oh, were they married? I thought it was his fiance. I think they're married. married. Oh, I don't want to do that again. I don't want to like have another wife. Yeah. Um, for some reason, I thought it was his fiance. Um, wait, I had a question for Lisa. Lisa, did you like the Teresa Medeiros one better? That you said was kind of similar. Oh hell yeah! It was my favorite book this year so far. It was so good. It brought tears to my eyes. I was like crying. <laughs> it was so good. I was like, damn. And then it sent me to a tear to Teresa Maduro spiral where I read more books by her. And then I was like, all right, I gotta stop because they were mid after. <laughs> <I can't remember. laughs> so yeah, we liked Maduro. We liked it. We liked her book. Yeah, it was good. Cause to remember, whew, you were so nice. Ah. It's funny because he has amnesia. So basically what happens is that he's like trying to take back his home that he grew up in. And um, he was riding his horse in the forest and then the horse got spooked. So then he fell off the horse and he hit his head on a tree trunk and then he got knocked out. Our heroine like needs a husband to like own the house that she lives in that he's trying to take back. So she finds this mysterious man in the forest and then she decides to take the man home and when he wakes up and he does not remember who he is, she just lies and says that you're my husband. And then, like, tries to, like, trick him into making him feel like he's been growing up in a very poor house all this time. When in reality, he's, like, a duke. And it's, it's like, it was so entertaining because he was, like, so confused the entire time. He's, like, why would I live in a house like this? Like, why would I do this? Why would I do that? And then, yeah. Which one is this? Uh, a Kiss to Remember. Isn't that just overboard, but make it historical? Yeah, and it's like Lorraine Heath's um, novels. <laughs> that I Heath the one that's overboard. Yeah, it's very similar. That's why <laughs> I liked it. And then our hero was so nice. He was just so nice. Well, he was grumpy and grouchy, but then, like, he was so nice in the end. And I was like, ah, die. <laughs> all these comments, they're talking about all this drama at the end with the, her sleeping with his grandpa? Oh, no, his grandfather's wife. But yeah. No, his wife got with his grandpa. Michael impregnated his first wife. Yeah, but then the grandpa thought it was his. Um, I, listen, uh, I skimmed a little bit of the end. All these people <laughs> were saying he was sleeping with his grandfather's wife, but in reality, the grandfather was sleeping with his wife. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, see, everything happened at the end, I told you. <laughs> throughout the book, not just in the end. <laughs> after the fire, I after the fire happened, it was like three thirty in the morning. So I definitely skimmed those last couple situations. <laughs> um, yeah, Teresa Medeiros was great. We read one of her books. Maybe we'll read another one because she is great. Lisa, did you get it on audio? Mm, no, I read it physically. Dun dun dun. I know. And I, because I set a goal for myself this year that I was going to read one physical book a week. And that fell through very quickly. <laughs> but that was one of my first physical books I read this year. Okay. I feel like we all start like challenges to, of our, to ourselves that we never finish. Like mine was I was going to read one classical book a month. Yeah. Uh-uh. You read Dracula, right? <laughs> 
No, oh, Phantom but- of the Opera. Well, Dracula and Phantom of the Opera, I read every year because those oh, are my okay. favorite. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I we do. do have to pick our next three books, by the way. It's time. Yeah. Uh, give us some recommendations, guys, in the comments. Some authors maybe that we haven't read from. Uh, they just have to publish before the 90s. Other than that. Or not before the 90s. 90s. Before the 2000s. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Our I next book is the Tale of the Cub book. What's yeah. the name of Virgin Fire. Yeah, I have it somewhere. Is this one before the 90s? Because I low-key want to read this one. What is it? Uh, Fires of Winter by Rebecca Gillis. Because look how pretty like cover is. Oh, I have that is one. Is it medieval? I have Possibly. that right over here. Possibly. Medieval. I think it is medieval. When is uh, this published? Because I want to read this one. I love medieval stories. 1990. Have you guys yeah. read this? Did we read Roberta Gell- Gellis for our next couple months? In a couple months? Let us and know. It's book two in a series. Huh? It's book two in a series? But it should oh, be fine. This must be the first one then. A Woman's Estate? No. Oh, this is when they're wearing those white wigs. <laughs> what? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like the when the parliament used to wear those white wigs. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Justin says, "What about Judith Ivory?" No, I, I don't know anything about her. I have no idea about that author. I think I've seen her name around, but I know nothing about her. But I'm good at reading Fires of Winter because I have that right over there. Yeah. So I think Roberta Gillis is definitely going to be one that we read because I have a ton of her books. And she wrote, like, alongside Kathleen Woodowis. Because one of them, it was blurbed by Kathleen Woodowis, I think. Um, okay. I'm excited for Virgin Fire 2. Tale of a Tub, guys. It's coming next month. Anne Stewart. To love a dark lord. Mm. I don't like her books. <laughs> oh. <Why? laughs> They're... Fair enough. I try because I a lot of people really like her, but it's something about her writing just doesn't mesh well with me. So I just don't like her books. Mm. That's fair. But they they said that she has really good bad boy heroes. So if you like bad boys, apparently she's a good author for that. Should we finally read Kathleen (laughs) Woodowis? You know, me and Lacey said we were going to actually read one of her books because they're doing audios for her books now. They're coming out at the end of the year. Well, we read Sh- Shana, 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 Shana. Yeah, I was not gonna read it physically. <laughs> I need yeah, Shana. Was Shana good? I feel like for science, we should read The Wolf and the Dove. You know, because that was the first historical. That's romance. the one I want to read oh, I so bad. One. I love yeah, the I cover. What do you think, Lisa? Was it, it horrible? Was bad. It was so <laughs> bad. It was so bad. There's so many like trigger warnings to that book. It was so bad. I mean, that I do know that they're written in the 70s, and people do say that there's a lot of triggers, but I just want to hear. The hero was a D I C K. (laughs) He never redeemed himself. So, yeah. It was massive. I hated hated Shanna because I thought the heroine was literally the worst heroine I've ever read about. I I hated that book. (laughs) Um,. I wonder they why they're so loved the though. Coming out in July. What'd you say? Have Sorry. You... The Wolf and the Dove is coming out in July on audio. Yeah, they it got pushed back. Why? Past it July. Really it was gonna come out in May, so they pushed it back. Because okay. I was texting Lacey, and I was like, "Oh, it's you know my birthday month. It's gonna come out in May," and I guess they pushed it back. <laughs> I feel like Judith Ivory might be a good pick. She has a lot of, like, um, a lot of her ones on Goodreads are pretty, pretty highly rated. Like, they're averaging, like, 3.8, four stars. So maybe, yeah, for sure. But what is this? Justin, why has this not been your first recommendation? (laughs) Wait, I think I have that. Wait, hold on. I did a reading vlog that I never posted. I I didn't want to edit it. But I did a reading vlog of reading a bunch of Phantom of the Opera retellings. That y'all will never see. You still have the footage. You could still edit and publish it. No, no, it's just a hot mess. When was this published? 
1996. Oh, Jessica, please. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me look at it. Jessica, <laughs> please. She's, like, she's literally like being a teacher. Let me look at it. Let me make sense. <laughs> It has 34 uh, ratings on Goodreads. So uh, 34 gem. reviews, 259 ratings. We can find a hidden gem. Oh my god. Sam. Jessica, please. Literally the second review. DNF, this book is pain. <laughs> but so many reviews after it is four and five stars. Four and five stars. The people, it's time travel. You like time travel, Jessica. Even the person who gave it two stars still wrote good book. <laughs> <laughs> A wonderful, thrilling time travel romance. Thrilling. Oh, wonderful. Cool. Huh? This book's on KU? Probably. That's what someone says. Is it? They have a lot of older historical romances on KU now. It's very interesting. You think they lose their um, their what like, is it called? copyright? Yeah. Oh, it's KU. It when have we ever had a book that's available on KU? This is a sign. This is a <laughs> literal sign from Justin. <laughs> Justin is going to be on this live show. So. Yeah, now he has to be. He can suffer through it with us. What is this one called? I love how There's, Danny Phantom came up for it this. It has a book called The Phantom of the Bathtub. Cute. <laughs> Does he haunt my bathtub? You should watch <laughs> bathtub romances. Do we have just a bathtub theme for our books now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she wrote that same book. There's a ghost in her bathtub and a werewolf in her garden. Period. <laughs> what? what is going on justin thank you i will be convincing jessica that we desperately need to read that look at the tightest yeah. smile that jessica has on her face right now. <laughs> it's so tight. it's, she's gonna break it like she's like what is happening you know what i have another phantom of the opera retelling that's a historical one so let me see when it was published okay well this one i don't think is actually historical it's the, time uh, yeah, so he. I mean, that, I mean, that's kind of like the. Was that Knight in Shining Armor where some of it was in the present day? It was Beatrice Small. Phantom. Let's see when this was published. I thought the one that we read was. Um, she was like, remember, she was like, gonna marry that awful guy. And is that another one? <laughs> yeah, 1991. I think that. Okay, I would be fine with this one since it's on KU. Is this one historical? Somebody sent this to me. Look at this gorgeous step back. Oh, oh wow. wow. It's oh, a that great is nice. major. All right. Well, maybe or maybe not. We shall read a phantom retelling. Okay. So what was the other one? Oh, Fires of Winter. I Rebecca Gillis. Phantom in Time. I don't know about um, another Beatrice Small. Well, the one's going to be a, a show. Which one? The one that Crystal read. Um, Sky O'Malley. Did she like that book? I thought it had consent issues. Yeah, but she said like it was bonkers. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, maybe we'll read Sky O'Malley then if it's going to be a show. Yeah. I don't know when it's going to be a show. Oh, an Apple adaption. Christy! I feel like you know everything. Yeah. You are a goat. Um, time travel, yes. We haven't read many time travel ones. Mm, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's anything over. It's funny because I'm going to finish my Phantom Tattoo on Wednesday. Oh, you are? Yeah. I have to add some stuff to it because I feel like it looks plain. <clears throat> I don't have anything no, here. But I have her books. I have some of those. I don't have any of her oh, books. Oh, yeah, I have some of her oh, books. Oh, they're pretty step backs. They are. Pretty. Isn't one like a pink cover? Yes. I don't remember what that one. I think there's one where she's kind of like a mermaid, but she's not really. She's like in the ocean and she's like drowning or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking now. I, I don't have any of her books. I think she has a, a medieval <clears throat> series that my friend got me, I think. We don't read a lot of medieval, so that would be that would be fun. <clears throat> I would love to read another Connie Mason book because her books are 
wild. Mm. I don't know. Ju Wait. No, Drew Dever. We did read that one. We did yeah, that. we read this one, and it was between the past. I remember that one a lot. I liked that one. I was going to say I've never read a Drew Dever book, but then I remembered. We read yeah, because remember then they were, like, falling in love in the present, and then they went back in time, and he completely forgot who she was. And she's like... Yes. And I remember I liked it because it was realistic, too. Because she was like, y'all don't wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was funny. Um, so yeah, I've I heard of a lot of these authors. Roxanne? Roxanne? Yeah, I've never heard of this. I was Did right, yeah. Know? She does have a medieval series called The Brides of Virtue for Betna Kron, which I need to read eventually. Yeah. Did you guys know that he's not... never seen Han Rouge? I feel like that's a crime. I so, haven't watched it. I forgot about it. That's like, yes, that's that's true, Christy. Um, I'm sorry. I clearly forgot what our... Oh, yeah, it's Australia one, right? With the kangaroos. And we picked it the same time we picked the bathtub one because I was talking about the cover. Yeah. Yeah. Wild Land, Wild Love is the title. Man, I'm really on one today. <clears throat> Let me see. That author. She has like that one, the the one, it's um Heart of the Storm. Here, I'm gonna grab it. I have it right over here. The Maiden Bride. That sounds like something I'd read by what's her name? Rexanne Beshnell. The matchmaker. Ooh. This one. That noble one takes her twin's place in marriage to a mater. That sounds Ooh, like that's, that's pretty. Nice. That, that is pretty. pretty. That is pretty. I want to log on to Thriftbucks one second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just one second. Just one second. Just a quick browse. <laughs> Speaking of, that's right. You said you don't find a lot of hardcovers. All of the Beverly Jenkins ones are in hardcover, and so are the Lisa Clapis ones. I mean, like the mass market hardcovers. I've only ever seen one book that's done that, which is the. Oh, American like they are small, but they're in hardcover. Yeah, which is the only reason I bought it. I only have one, and it's um by Jane Eyre. Where is it? I don't know where it is. The Rose of Blackwood. Oh, I have this book somewhere. Actually, I do have this book. All right, you've convinced me, Chrissy. I need to read. <laughs> I need to read Rexanne's books because I, I really do want to read medievals. Which ones are published before the 90s? Most of these are like early 2000s. Mm. 2015, 2011. Yeah. Um, have you guys noticed, though, that historicals are now going up to $10? Yeah. Yeah. They, they were like 7 and then they just jumped it which but they jumped a little bit for like the big sizes but now they're back to these sizes and it's like the shiny it's like not even like the nice soft and literally it says 9.99 for this look at the canadian price it's 12.99 <laughs> oh <laughs> it's ass like what happened to 7.99 I don't two know for what fifteen at like, Walmart, guys. Two for at fifteen least, like, still. <laughs> it or something like the raised text. Like this is literally just like shiny. Yeah. yeah. You didn't even try. But did you get yeah. that for free? The Kathy yeah. Maxwell one. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and we hate the cover, so it's fine. I was like, I probably wouldn't have bought it because of that cover. Yeah, yeah. it's not nice. It's not I'm nice. like fully impressed with a lot of the new releases for historic romances, like. The covers are boring. Some of them are in the trade paper, like the trade still with the um, the illustrated edition. Like I just got this one. Like what is this? <laughs> what is this? Why? Yeah. Why? That? Yeah. Are yours by Joanna Lowell. Um, Have you read her books? Are they good? No, but I requested this one because it sounded good, and then I saw the cover, and I was like, oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> this cover? Oh, I have it. Oh, okay, but I love it. Again, why don't they do something nice to the font where they make it raised instead of just the shiny again? I don't know. Yeah. Too expensive, have you seen the obviously. Ratings for that book? Um, the ratings for the book one are low, too, and I love book one, so. <laughs> 
Okay, let me know if it's four. <laughs> They're so low. I'm not trusting I mean, The only one that I'm still loving their covers is um what's her name? Yeah. Oh wait. I have that on my um what is it, one to read after you showed that last live show. Speaking of entangled romances, there's this one author called Lydia Drake that debuted it debuted like in December and it's so good and her next novel is out December this year and I want to die but it's called Cinderella and the Duke and our heroine is so funny and she's so like she's such a smart ass so it was just really great and I really enjoyed it and I never talked about it on my channel because it was in a reading vlog that I just never uploaded (laughs) so yeah you said Lydia Drake yeah Lydia Drake She's new. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I always find it funny when the hero just doesn't have a shirt on and she's fully clothed. This is funny. And books who tried too hard? <laughs> Nobody liked it. But I appreciate yeah. the effort. <laughs> the cover was beautiful. <laughs> she took two years to write it. <laughs> Adriana Herrera has pretty, pretty historical romance covers too. My hoopla has the audio for Lydia Drake. Do it. It's so good. It's also on KU. So that's you know what? Let me add it. I started working like in the back office again, so I get to read audiobooks my entire eight hour shift. I'm so spoiled. That's all I want. And that I'll, would be I'll like a book a day on audio. I literally, the first week that I went back to being back office, I don't know why I left. That was a poor decision on my part. Um, <laughs> Dang, girl, you were just like, ah, oh, leave the no thing. Oh, the audio books. Why'd you leave? I know. I finished a book a day, like Monday through Friday. I read a book a day. I read the whole Tessa Hale um, series, her the three wow. elemental ones and then the three shifter ones. Did you like them? Oh, I was vibing. I was. I loved it. It was so good. Although Jessica, I will say. <laughs> She passed out an obscene amount. Like in <laughs> this book. She and which one? Both of them. Especially the elemental one. Like she would use her powers and then she like oh, and then I only read the first one in that series. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> like every end of the chapter was like, and then darkness came. And then darkness <laughs> darkness. <came. laughs> I think every book cliffhanger is that she passes out because someone attacks her. Like yeah. every that's a lot oh my gosh yeah, yeah it really was but they're the fine sh- i like them oh i gave them like four or five stars i'm just yeah. i trashed them because i love them you know <laughs> <laughs> okay lydia drake i'm looking her up on Hoopla. Mm. there's also this western author that i've been reading her name is Lori copeland and she's like the first romance like historical i mean historical western romance author that i'm i enjoy because it's wild. It's like wagon chases. And it's just like three sisters who are, um, they are lawbreakers. Like they, they're always on the hunt. Um, people are always chasing after them because they keep breaking the law. And our hero in the third book that I read is a sheriff. So he's arresting the heroine and he ends up falling in love with her. And it's really fun. What's the name? How do you spell her name? Because I'm getting like, coloring books not <laughs> Lori L O R I and then Cope like C O P E and then Land L A N D Okay I was and then with Promise the me L-A-U. forever is what I read and then she changed the covers cuz like these books oh, were published yeah. in like the older like in the late I don't know 90s or something like I that. would never pick this up if I saw this in Walmart <laughs> Yeah and then the, right the older covers look ugly and then she changed the titles too does she hurt. does she write like oh you said she western are they religious no it's like a western historical romance but it looks like she changed everything like she rebranded it after I guess the rights turned back to her oh they look like those um like religious like Amish books yeah, yeah they, I know they look ratchet don't worry I was like what is Faith. this <laughs> yeah and then also but it's like Fade to Black so uh, okay. But it was so I can actually handle that if it's done really well, but very few books have convinced me that it's done really well. So, yeah. Although, I will read them. Um, I'll read them. Why not? I don't read a lot of westerns. I think, honestly, the only westerns I read is Johanna Lindsay and Beverly Jenkins. Yeah. Yeah. 
I liked Lorraine's Texas Destiny. Oh, we read that. Yeah, yeah, I liked that one too. I read the whole series. I read the three books. All the brothers. I think he likes this one series by, I think the author's name is Tesla Sue or something. Is that her name? Are those um, contemporary? They're westerns. The hero like has plans. Dun, dun, dun. I don't I know what have to be in my bedroom. I don't know <laughs> what the last name of that author was. But I do have the books. I forget what the name of the author is. Tess something. I think it is Tesla Sue. Am I just spelling it wrong? <laughs> As <usual. laughs> Uh, we don't have a date for the April book. Uh, we normally try to pick like the last weekend um, of the month, but we will we'll have our announcement on the Historic Hellions page because we haven't picked a date or co-host yet. So, well, it's the two that on from the live show we picked the book, right? Y- yeah, but like a the date of when yeah. we're doing. I don't remember who all was in there though. Justin was and oh oh, I, you're saying they said they wanted to do it. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I think it was Justin and Christy. Um, so Virgin Fire by Elizabeth Chadwick is April. And then uh, Devil's Bride by Stephanie Lawrence is May. Mm, Devil's Bride. And then Australia, Connie Mason. Yes. Wild Land, Wild Love by Connie Mason. Australia. There's kangaroos on the cover. <laughs> That's why they needed those penguins in this step back to make it that much more exciting. What year in Australia is it? Um, I don't know. I'll check right now. Hold on. They did mention right, uh, peacocks in here, right? Yeah, yes. But I guess the they didn't like the dreary Welsh weather or something like that. Yeah. 1812. I read an Australian historical and it just kind of made me sad. <laughs> it says, <laughs> in the Pacific Ocean, 1812. Okay. Is it because of the, wasn't it a, like a prison? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, Kira Andrews, and he was shipped off to Australia as a prisoner because uh, he was gay. And they're out in, like, the Australian desert and all of these wild animals and whatnot, and it's super dangerous. And it was kind of depressing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> all right. What are you guys reading right now? Oh, what am I reading right now? I just told you and I forgot the title. It's really... du, du, du. I'm reading Flawless by Elsie Silver. Mm-hmm. I'm on my indie romance reading popular binge. Reading popular indie romances binge. And sorry, Jessica. <laughs> 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 Finger guns. <laughs> I feel like my readings are going to still be divided. But hey, I read Haunting Adeline and I gave it four out of five stars. Oh my gosh, I just read that. I know. I read it. Like, I was, as you were reading it, I was finishing it. And then I read okay. Hunting Adeline and I was like, mm. <laughs> cut it. Cut the cameras. Like, 50% <laughs> in. I was like, cut the cameras, guys. We're done. Call it quits. Shows over. Okay. Yeah. I haven't read any Elsie Silver, unsurprisingly. I don't really You're feel You're not like... liking her? Samantha. I haven't read anything by her. Samantha, I mean... don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, everybody loves Elsie Silver. Okay, I think okay, I would but... like the second book more because I think the second book is Enemies to Lovers. And this one is like kind of like Friends to Lovers. And I'm like, okay, like whatever. And then it's set out in Alberta. And I'm like, Alberta. <laughs> She's Canadian. Like, okay. You should be connecting with the Canadian author. <laughs> I'm like, yes, go girl queen Canada. But like also at the same time, like, ah, like it just... Okay, okay. Heartless. I'm going to read Heartless. Don't worry, guys. Heartless is right after Flawless for me. I just um, need this what happened me. is I messaged Lacey and I was like, okay, what is the deal with Elsie Silver and Catherine Coles? Like, I oh, need yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what's the deal? What's the spice level? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> These are straight contemporary romances. What's going on? And then Lacey was like, mm, Sam, I don't think that they're going to be spicy enough for you. And I was like, okay. Fair enough. Elsie Silver <laughs> is like small town romance, but like I don't see anything going on with Flawless. Is it Flawless? The one that I'm reading, the first one? So yeah. I loved Flawless. 
So I need to get my. I know. I read your review. It was like this book is everything. It's perfect, and I was like, oh, Jessica, I'm so sorry. Okay, Basically, Heartless. Me I should read it. I know I'm gonna like Heartless. It. Enemies to lovers. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. I mean, I really like Powerless, but that's friends to lovers, so you'd probably find it boring. Okay, Powerless. I don't have the audio. Like, I don't think the audio is out yet. Is it out? I don't know. Like, yeah. I'll see if it's out. Oh, okay. I love friends to lovers. I'd probably like it. Friends to lovers is my favorite trope. Well, it used to be my favorite trope. I don't know. I haven't read a contemporary straight romance with two people in a very long time. <laughs> in a yeah. very long time. Yeah. <laughs> me and sam always have this conversation like we just think that that is we're past that era of just like contemporary straight couples and it's just like not enough so i can read the historicals with the straight couples but like with the contemporary i'm just bored and i don't know why i, I can't get over it so <laughs> all right let's like, stop yeah. breaking jessica's heart Oh Wait, I will read it though. I will read that one eventually. I do want to read that one Elsie Silver book, but it's but just Jessica. It's like, I literally it. looked at your page on Instagram, and then I'm like, okay, that's the next indie popular romance book I gotta read now. Did you next like DK Borison? I have not looked to watch your video yet. I know you posted that today. Nah, I didn't like it. <laughs> 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 I didn't like it, and I didn't like funny feelings. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the only one I like was the co-op, but that was like a three and a half out of five stars for me. And the one my thing that I was... did like would be something that you would hate, I feel like, which is my dark Romeo. I just got that audio. Yeah. But I know how you guys don't like LJ Shen anymore. And I feel like a lot of people who've read LJ Shen read My Dark Romeo and went like, of course LJ Shen would ruin this book. For oh us. no, really? Because I was excited because it was with Parker Huntington. Yeah, but I feel like because I read a lot of Parker's books, Parker is the one that makes my Dark Romeo so good because I can okay. tell which parts did Parker write. Like it's really? very like I divided. Mean, LJ Shen's very formulaic and writes the same kind of hero over and over again. So okay, but I think Parker had more control over this hero. I feel like he's more of like a evil villainous character that had something against our heroine okay can we stop with the funny feelings hate in the comments please <laughs> I'm upset. I'm sorry, this is like hate on jess's favorite oh, i'm Mara. sorry i'm so jessica, sorry jessica. jessica has amazing rex okay she does Do I? I mean it sounds like i don't anymore no, no 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 no. it's just like this group of people just didn't like it great Jessica, you are the goat when it comes to Rex. I promise. We're just messing with you. Um, okay, April pick. Some people are saying that their library has it, so check Hoopla and Libby. It's on, isn't the ebook on Amazon? The ebook is on Amazon, um, but I think it's like a more expensive ebook. I can't remember. Um, and then I think when we checked it, Thrift Books had it. So yeah, but check your library or Amazon ebook. I think the ebook is probably gonna be your best bet. It's four dollars um, on Amazon. Sure. There you go. Four dollar ebook on Amazon. The paperback is fifty four dollars right now. Wait, what? So, <laughs> you're so sweet. Even when you don't like a book, you're the sweetest. I love reading your reviews. Versus me, I'm like this book was trash. <laughs> me being a neutral Canadian, I don't know. It's just, I mean, like Alberta's fine. I want to go to Alberta this summer, anyways. But you know what's I'm funny? Though? I might read them, Lisa, because I feel like low key we have opposite reading tastes. Because sometimes when I read a historical, I'll be like, this is the worst book I've ever read. And then you give it five stars. <laughs> <laughs> gang, gang. <laughs> Lisa is no stranger to being the opposite of everybody else, though. You know what? Okay, okay. Like, but you know what I recently found out? I recently found out that, like, Chandler and I have similar reading tastes. But then also at the same time, sometimes, like, she rates them, like, low and then I rate them high. But most of the time, it's, like, kind of... But I low key like reading or watching booktubers that have like opposite reading tastes to me because then I could watch the reading vlog with like spoilers and not give a fuck because I'm like I'm not yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> watching. You know, Did whatnot. you guys read In a Jam by Kate Canterbury? I know I, if Christy's still here, I read Christy's review and I was like, "Hey yo, Christy!" <laughs> like In saying, a Jam? Yeah, In a Jam, the popular Kindle Unlimited yeah. book. I read it. I you enjoyed like it. it. Oh, no, like I enjoyed it. it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I enjoyed it, but I didn't like it as much as Christy, I think. I do want to read that one. What yeah. is, what's the author's name? I've never seen this Kate cover, but I'm like out of the Canta loop. Canterbury. And it's like, okay, it's a very slow romance. Very slow romance. 
<laughs> um, what pages is it? Oh, 474. It's on your library. It does because it's your library card it's connected to. So if you don't have a good library, you might not have it available. But I will say that during the pandemic, they changed it that you can essentially get your ebook like library card anywhere. Just pick a police station or like a business address in the city that you pick want. Police. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. wait. Gas station. <laughs> just put the address, okay? Because it's just the ebooks. They're not going to give you a physical library card and you can't walk into the library, but you have access to like Hoopla and Libby. Just pick, just pick an address. Or the big cities in your state. So like I am in yeah. Columbus, but I have a Cleveland library card for Cuyahoga County. And like they are a massive library system and have a ton. And like I'm in state, so you can do that. I I tried I that trick, Google but me. because of the type of book that I read, Virginia doesn't have those. I had to use Sam's library card. I they don't have what I want. <laughs> uh, goodness. I don't know why I said a police station. I just felt like that was something. <laughs> <everybody> Maybe <knew. laughs> hanging out with the police. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not me over here googling police station. <laughs> you know why I, did this? I did this with a with a city I don't live in, and because. But when they send mail to the police station, then and they have your name. I, no, it's not, they don't send nothing there. It's the. <laughs> but what <laughs> do they do? <laughs> <laughs> but how are we going to find like, this? We're going to track them down. No, they can't find this Samantha though. Like, because she doesn't have the address provided, like the real address. I mean, it's a library card. Or some library, whatever. Some libraries will let you have a library, like the New York one, if you pay a small fee. Yeah, and you can have New York stop that. Oh, I don't know. I'd heard that's what people do. I just again picked a random address. Okay, you know what? Let me listen. You have all these library cards, and you're like just putting down these police stations. <laughs> no, like no. I do it the old fashioned way where I borrow people's library cards. I didn't do some random addresses. So, my New York library card is so funny. It's the cousin of a former best friend from college's library card. I don't even talk to this girl anymore, and I still use this library card. So, thank you. Okay, <laughs> I'm talking about sharing. the police station. The police station is going to be like, who <laughs> are not sending any mail? <laughs> Because, listen, so what you do is you go on there, you put the address, whatever whatever you want, and they give you the number, and you put that in Libby or Hoopla. And then it's like, if you want your physical library card, come verify your address or verify your address online. Or the like, library, yeah. And you just do never you do think, that. Do you think me, as a non-American, can get it, too? Like, if Yeah, I just, absolutely. A hundred percent. Welcome to America. <laughs> because uh-huh. when... I have family like across the United States. Like I have an uncle in New York, and I was like, he doesn't read. What does he need his address for? So I just, <laughs> no, what does he need his, his, address, his address? Just identity th- fraud. <laughs> just continue. I know. I feel like you're just like stealing people's identities for your library card. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I asked them if I could use their. Oh, address. you didn't say that. I was like, did you just like use your your uncle's card? I mean, how would he know? But I did ask him. <laughs> but again, um, I'm like, what if someone has all these cards out on my name and I don't know? Don't not your it. name. It's not your, your social. My address. Yeah, just your address. Just your address. It's not like your social. <laughs> um, okay, fine, guys. Don't use the police station. Use the Wendy's. <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> just pick an address. How many library cards do you have? They're asking. I feel like I'm incriminating myself with this. <laughs> I'll tell you how many I have if you tell them how many you have, because I have a lot too. All right, fine. Um, <laughs> let me see. I, I don't have that many. many. I don't have two. Three in Ohio. I don't have two. that many because I pick the big cities, and they usually have like all of the audiobooks I would need. So it's like I'm not trying to get greedy here. Hmm. One, two, three. I have five. Oh. I have. Three. I have eight. How? <laughs> Girl, the hearing is incriminating me. <laughs> so, Wait, here's what happened. Wait, and my card. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, the only ones that are worth me using are the one that you gave me and the New York one. And I can never use my own library card because I never have a book that I want. And then my friend who used to live in the 
rich county in Virginia, I use her library card and they almost never have what I want from them either. Mm-hmm. I have my sister's library card. I have the other library card that you gave me as well, Sam. And then I have the second library card from the friend who lived in that rich county because she moved to Florida. And once again, they don't have what I want. So I only use the LA one and the one in New York, but I have eight logged. Yeah, I have three in my state and then one in New York and one in Texas. I just picked like major yeah. cities and they I never I never have an audiobook I can't find. Use fire stations, because if they come <laughs> <laughs> You. you can find a boyfriend too. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I'm not greedy, guys. And I don't even listen. The funny part is, is I don't listen to audiobooks that much. I'm not usually an audiobook person. Um, but anyways. Yeah. It was so funny. She gave me her library card and she's just like, I don't even listen to audiobooks. And as soon as she gave it to me, she started listening to audiobooks. So <laughs> Because I ended up working in the back office and it's just so silent. I know. It's, it's just it's typing. So I'm like, how am I supposed to, like, what am I supposed to okay, do? Okay, that's why I was confused when you were like, can I join one of your audiobook narrator interviews? I was like, yeah, but, like, do you listen to audiobooks? <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I only joined Teddy Hamilton because yeah. I literally search Teddy Hamilton and read all the books he narrates. Uh, I do that for Joel. a lot of MM, too. too. Is that why? Yeah, that, too. See? straight yeah. couple wait jessica how did you get all these narrators to like agree like did you just like dm them and like yeah, email them and them? okay and you still know sebastian york <laughs> um some of them have like no contact information yeah, yeah. so the mysterious like, sebastian york some of them i was like i messaged them and they're like oh i never checked this here's my email i was like i couldn't even find your email like i look them up and it leads me to like tantor's website Um, and like a profile on them but i'm like these people are impossible to get a hold of yeah jessica has the riz she could get anyone (laughs) she got beverly jenkins like (laughs) i just need you to work some magic on lisa clapis jess Wait, 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 is that actually happening? No. Tears of joy. Tessa How would Dare. I pick who to be on the live show with me? How would I even pick? I have a tattoo. You don't pick I'm anybody. So if I am not in that live show. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, really, I'm kidding. I will be in the Are you though? I will be in the comments. Are you? Who would kick me out of our book club if I did not... You could just have the OGs, you and Lacey and Lisa, the holy trinity of historical romances. And then you. And then me. Thanks. (laughs) I'm like the adopted stepchild. (laughs) (laughs) See, everybody has four or five library books and y'all wanted to make it seem like I was crazy. You pay? What are you paying? Like, oh, there's, like, I a don't monthly pay or, like, yearly fee for, like, library cards? Monica said there was, a, in Houston, I think she pays 60 or, like, you can pay $60 for the year. I'm not $60 doing that. $60 for the year? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, there are that you is. Yeah, but yeah. I already paid for KU, so I'm not doing that. Yeah, the library's supposed to be for free, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I try, but they don't want to put what, what I want to read, so it's, yeah. And it's never going to happen. You can you request books anything. that you want. You know, yeah, I, should never do. Gonna, I should just like the start a Canadian not right. in the area that Desiree lives. Yeah, not where I live, girly. <laughs> oh, sorry. I should just share library cards with other people, too, like in Canada. Just like, I'll meet people in, like, <laughs> British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan. And, uh, Justin, where are you living now? Share your library card information with me. <laughs> Everyone's like, drop the addresses. <laughs> yeah, drop the addresses, guys. I'll share my numbers right now with you guys. Oh um, but she, he said that you need a U.S. phone number. For what? For me to to sign up a library like, card? Want to and they won't ever know. No, Jessica, pass me your phone number right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to text. That's all. I swear. <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine? <laughs> okay, what if there was a dating app? That you yeah. said what your favorite books were, and then you got matched to people who had similar reading tastes. Yeah, you start it. You start it. 
There I saw go. somebody on BookTube yesterday who was doing this like traveling book box where they like add a book into the book box and then everybody starts adding a book and then you take a book out of it when you receive the box and you put another book back in. And it was so interesting. It's it so like interesting. the little free libraries. Yeah, but they do it through mail and they <laughs> did it across Canada. Books. I would say you got to yeah. buy some media mail that. or is it like still Canada. expensive to ship that? But in you Canada? don't if you yeah. live there. In Canada, we have this box that you can ship for like thirty dollars. Oh, it's like That's a flight so across time. Canada. So the whole big box was just filled with like books, and he was just taking them out. And he's like, "Okay, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna put this in," and I'm like, "This is so fun. I have nobody here in Canada. I could do it. I probably have like three people I know. So yeah." There's a couple of kid- no, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought, of, I thought of like two people. <laughs> that yeah. was it. Justin and like this other booktuber that I know. <laughs> yeah. The only other Canadian one I know is like Kayla, but I mean, she doesn't read romance. Oh, she does, but anyways. Um, if you pick a random So I think Christine <laughs> is the actual way you're supposed to do it, guys. Ignore what I said. I don't do that. <laughs> Don't steal from the library. Oh my gosh. Don't like Google Maps address. Or improvising. <laughs> don't uh, do it. <laughs> and if you do, use a fire station. <laughs> or a police station. You want on your door. We don't want the police knocking on our door. Or a hospital. That's okay too. Yes, Nikki. A yes, hospital. that's another one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, we were supposed to talk about what we were reading. Oh, I found it. Uh, it's called Bro and the Beast by L.C. Davis. And it's a Omegaverse because I'm on my Omegaverse kick. And it's also a shifter romance. And apparently uh, Sam has already read this author and I didn't even know. Or maybe I did know and I just forgot. But I picked it up because it was recommended to me after my previous read. And it's set in the 80s. I've never actually read a book set in the 80s, ironically mm-hmm. enough. And so the cover has like this sort of 80s... Yo, that's it. actually so cute. Yeah. That's actually so cute. What the it's heck? It's really funny. He's like this frat boy and he has like a twin brother or something who's reading the book that he's teleported into. So the reason that I picked it up is because a lot of BL manga have this theme going right now of what they call an isekai, which is like a traveling into the universe of the book that you're reading Ooh. type story so i guess it's moved over to romance so i'm very excited it's it's so much fun so far and it's only 137 pages so i I know i'm gonna finish it tomorrow (laughs) all right i'm gonna do it at work the only reason you (laughs) please do have handcuffs i know wink (laughs) okay i'm sorry i'm sorry um the only reason you don't remember my lc davis recommendation is because it's poly that's why I didn't read it. There we go. I forget all those titles. We have titles, a poly but... vampire romance, which is great. And the most bonkers thing I've ever read. They literally kill him. And, like, yeah, it's great. Try to get him back alive? Like, resurrect him? Into... No, no, no. So, oh. they're vampires. And yeah. they're, like, magically soulmate energy connected to this blood goddess and every couple years they have to like reincarnate her and it's by sacrifice but they mess up the sacrifice and need another sacrifice so they have a human best friend who they're like we don't really need him let's just you know kill him (laughs) and he ends up being kind of like powerful and when they kill him he is a vessel for the blood goddess so he wakes up real pissed off because they killed him but now they're soulmates it's great. Mm. It's great. And there's, it's like five vampires and then him. This reminds me of the time where you messaged me when you were on vacation with the girlies and you were like, Lisa, why did you read about the COVID-19 romance? <laughs> romance? And I had to explain myself. And I was like, listen, it was for a video. And then I was like, oh, I can't put this on the internet. So like, I just read That's the one where she fell in love like with actual COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other ones where she fell in love with her feces. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was the one we messaged you about. Yeah. And you're like, Lisa. <laughs> like, it was like very <laughs> random. No. Because like Sam and I don't really talk that much on Instagram. And then I just see a message yeah. from her. And I'm like, what's this? And then it's like a screenshot of my review. 
<laughs> but you know, what? in your defense, everyone was reading that book for a video, the COVID nineteen roommate. Yeah, and then I explained to oh. Sam about the feces one about how she. No, we were talking about the feces one. We weren't talking about the COVID one. Yeah, the COVID nineteen oh. was the normal one of the conversation. Oh, God. Jess is going <laughs> to kick me out of the live show next <laughs> month. That's what's going to happen. Um, thank you, Rex. I'm so happy to talk about this one. It's called Pucked, like, Pucking Around, Pucking Around by Emily Wraith. And it is a poly romance between a physical therapist, two, oh, no, a hockey player, a goalie, and, and, and the equipment manager. Three guys, one girl, poly romance. It's so good. It is 752 pages. pages? (laughs) But it's so good. That's a a dictionary. (laughs) For a hockey romance. Yeah. For three guys, I guess they they each had their, they had their own, you know, chapter, chapters. Literally. That's how she wrote it. She wrote, like, her meeting, like, each of them, like, in each phase, and then all of them together. Anyways, I read her historical romance, poly romance. And that one's not as good. Her hockey romance one is superior. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Sam keeps reading um, all these 700-page books, and I'm just like, I, that's too much for me. I'm out here reading 127-page books and 200-page novellas, and that's how I am getting through this year. I don't know how she's doing the 700-page book thing. I mean, recently well, I started reading very long books, too, but this one is 752 pages. <laughs> Yeah. But when it's poly, you have a lot of people. You got to yeah. get to know yeah. them. I can barely yeah. keep two men's names straight. I don't know how you're doing six people. That's my whole thing. Like, how are we? I will literally be reading the book and I'm like, which one is which? I told you how I remember them. The blonde one. I know, but one. I need to the know blonde the blonde one. The mean one. The nice one. <laughs> but yeah, I, I can't do that. Names. Um, names. Jessica, what? Regular, regular book are you reading? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm reading Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. Um, that one's 577 pages, and I like that long. So I don't know how you're reading these, like, 750-page books. But um, it's – have you seen it? It's, like, uh, pretty popular it's, um, in Ireland, and he's a rugby player. Ooh. I like yeah. that. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Wait, how do you find these books? I'm so confused. Oh, wait, no, this one's the newer cover. Oh, okay, I get it. I, I've seen this one before. Binding oh, Thirteen. it is really popular. I'm reading it because of my blog for reading BookTube's best books of 2022 is going up this week. Mm-hmm. And that's one of them. That's exciting. That's cool. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. I did okay. read one long book this year, but I've only read the one long book. And that's oh. it. I'm just trying to... The title was also long. It's the book that Jess picked up at the Barnes & Noble hardcover sale. Oh, and I'm just trying to remember oh, what the title was. It's that MM Fantasy. Yeah, and I just can't remember what it was called. <laughs> Even though I loved it. He was betrothed to someone, but then they figured out that he was gay, so they made him be betrothed to that girl's sister. And then, like, for a political... Uh, sorry, that girl's brother. And then they had, like, a political alliance between the the two families. So. A Strange and Stubborn Endurance by Foz Meadows. And I can't wait for book two, because... It was amazing. Wait, is that that one? Is that the plot of that one? Or is that the other one that I had? That's the plot, yeah. Okay, so there was another one that I took a photo of and asked you about, but I didn't buy that one. Yeah, that one I've never heard of either. But this one, it ended up being really, really good. And I told my friend Sally, who's also on Bookstagram, that she needs to read it because she's more of a fantasy reader than anything. Mm -hmm. And all the books she reads are like Sam with the 600 pages or whatever is slow burn mm-hmm. agonizing. She wants them to not kiss until like page 500. And I'm I like, I can't do that. I can't live like that. <laughs> hey, look, look. We have to make this clear that it's 700 pages of them. Not slow burn. I'm not reading a 700 page <laughs> slow burn. That's not going to happen. <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah, all of the books that she reads, my friend Sally is just like super long, very slow burn. She doesn't want them to even like, hold hands until the middle of the book and I'm like okay (laughs) too much for me yeah that's true I feel like fantasy books are usually longer that's true I normally read novellas it's just a recent thing that I've read these longer books to be honest I don't check the page count most of them are like recommendations off Kindle Limited like oh you like this book so read this one those are so dangerous they just like recommend 
the covers look so nice and I just keep going, okay, borrow, borrow, borrow. Yeah. Yeah. I like to make little videos of it because it's like one of those scroll buys. So I'll never remember it and I don't want it to disappear as I go through to like put it in my want to read. So I just take a little like uh, screenshot and then scroll through slowly (laughs) and then I go back and look them up later. So yeah, I have a lot of those books that I need to read. And they're all so obscure that no one that I know has read them. And I'll just be sending them to Sam and Lacey. It's like, look at this bonkers synopsis. I need to read it. So that's where I'm at. Lexi, tell me the tea for the fans. Because you know I love Nyla Kay. I need to know. Are are they stepbrothers? What are they? Uh, Are they stepbrothers? (laughs) Oh. Oh. It looks really good. And I've only heard good things. So so I love Push by Nyla Kay with my whole heart, body, and soul. But Step Brothers, listen, I'm okay with sacrificing someone, but Step Brothers is <laughs> one trope that I literally cannot read. Really? I can do Step. That really is, I don't know why. I can't do it. Step Brothers, Step Father, Step Siblings, I can't do it. Yeah, that's her like one hard pass, which I always think is funny. I and like so- that, so. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. It just feels wrong. It just feels wrong. Um, oh, But I like Nyla Kay. Push by Nyla Kay was one of my favorite books that I read last year. I'm going to have to read it. I'm going to have to read it. I'll get over it. I'm going to pretend they're not brothers. (laughs) (laughs) It's like probably how it works. Pretend. Um, I buy my historical romance books on eBay and thrift books. Same. Guys, should I place my order for those two books? Yeah. Which ones? Um, The one with the pretty step back that Jessica showed. I mean, hey, why not? I mean, it's you like sixteen dollars USD, so that's going to translate to twenty five dollars. <laughs> Maybe for hold two. off for two. I'm I'm buying two. Oh, okay, okay. But, but. All right, yeah. You... But they're mass market paperback, and they're twenty five dollars. Yeah, because the shipping's like six ninety nine, bro. Mm. USD. R.I.P. Yeah. If, if they're really myself. calling to you, Lisa, go ahead. Treat myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, and I like Hay writes really good, really good romances. Maybe I maybe yeah. I will read that one. See, I know this, isn't, like this is where I'm okay with the steps siblings because it's usually at least for the ones that I've read or watched, they meet in their teens and they've already fully developed and they don't know anything about the other person, so it's fine for me. It doesn't bother me. Hmm. I don't know. It's one of those random tropes that I just can't read. I don't think I have any other trigger warnings. I think that's about it. <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hmm. Your eBay journey stopped when you moved to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> it's just expensive. eBay's so dangerous. I need to uninstall that from my phone. We don't have used bookstores like thrift, like what, what? okay, you guys have like a ton of thrift stores. We just don't have yeah, Goodwill. And uh, Jess has. Value Village. Yeah, we have Value Village that sells the books for like five ninety nine, and I'm like, yeah. excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. It's not as good as yours, guys. It's a sad. If I have half price books like Jess, I would be there every weekend, but we do not. Yeah, like if I, I don't have half price, price books either. There's no half price books near me. And I don't yeah. even know the name of that store that I went to at, at my um, near my auntie's house, but that was a really good used bookstore. They had a really good, healthy romance section, and I got at the time the books that I w- were look I was looking at, and I was uh, sending them to Jess, asking her if she owned these or if she had read them. And I just went to the bookstore and I instantly found the entire series. That was a great experience. Wish that was near me, but it's not. <laughs> Two states over. Yeah, I know we don't have any. They get squashed out by like Chapters Indigo and like Value Village and Goodwill and Salvation Army. So we mm-hmm. don't have many used bookstores, except for like BMV Books in Toronto, which is okay. I mean, even here, the two used bookstores that I went to at the time closed during COVID. So yeah, yeah. You know have what? You guys I'll start one. That, um, that one video suggested to you about how Barnes and Noble is following the used bookstore local bookstore model i feel like every book person's been recommended that video and it just kind of made me upset i'm like no they aren't (laughs) no they aren't (laughs) yeah yeah i feel like used bookstores like that like are hard to find here too though like 
Most of the time I buy my books on thrift books. Yeah. Me too. Well, you guys saw the used bookstores in DC. That's all we got. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it just depends where you live, I suppose. I had a really good one. A really, really good one. It was $2 for a hardcover, any hardcover, and then $1 for mass market. And God, they had such good finds there, but it closed because of, because COVID. of COVID. Because of COVID, yeah. That sucks. It was inside a mall. So the mall itself was closed for ages. They couldn't operate because the mall itself was closed. So, you know, some stores were staying open and maybe they just had like restrictions, but the mall was just closed for ages. So they had to close. So what did they do with the books? Do you know? They're like sitting behind me. (laughs) They had a, like, the the week that they closed, the very last day, they were like, come with any bag, and the bag is $10. So as many books as you can fit in the bag, it's $10. So $10. I brought, my I was uh, working that day, so my dad went to the bookstore for me, and he took, like, the big Costco bags. Yeah. And just, like, cleared them <laughs> <up>. <laughs> yeah. then And the girl there knew me, so she was like, oh, yeah, just this whole shelf right here. Just go ahead. Good job. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, even took, I even took home their bookshelves. I have some of their bookshelves too. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my gosh. My dad would never. So yeah, that's yeah, how I that's how I have all those books is because of that that bookstore closing. I used to go to my local library for that's how I supported my local library. I went to the um uh book sales, but I always went on like the dollar for bag day because i wasn't going to pay the full price on the first day so i would get all the leftover books and that's also how i bought um twilight series because i had given up my original copies when i was a teenager because i went through that whole phase where it's like i like twilight and then i was bullied out of it so i got rid of them and then <laughs> i realized i actually still kind of like twilight so i rebought the books at the library sale and then i also bought a few uh historical romances there and a bunch of Nora Roberts there. This one old lady was showing me all over the bins where the Nora Roberts books were. So that was a great spot. And then COVID happened and they haven't had a library sale since. So yeah, I check every once in a while just to see if they reopen it, but they're still doing restrictions for it. Yeah. My library closed. And then after COVID, they did like a remodel. So it's like brand, brand new. Like it's a four story library. It's so nice. Oh my they, never do, they never do library sales there because they're so new. Yeah, I do yeah. Facebook Marketplace, but I'm the seller, so I'm the third. <laughs> <laughs> I'm selling books. I was like, okay, I'm not donating these books so that these thrift stores can sell these books for like five dollars, and I gain nothing from it, like not even a coupon. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to sell it on Facebook Marketplace, and I sell them for like two dollars, three dollars here, and I did it, guys. I earned a hundred dollars. Oh, nice. I always say I'm going to do that. Like, I created, like, an eBay thing and everything. And then I just don't... I end up dropping them off at free little libraries. It's so much work. I don't like the waiting. Yeah, I want to just get rid of things and declutter as soon as possible. I don't like the waiting. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. I'm meeting a lot of people on the street, on the gas stations. Gas stations? Yeah, I'm like, gas stations. Okay, so I was like, let's meet up at the gas station down my, like, because I, I don't want to tell them where I live. So I'll be like, let's meet up at this Air. random intersection gas station. But then it was like a 12 minute walk to get there. And I was like, fuck this. And then I <laughs> asked them to kind of go and meet me near closer to my house. And these people actually drive like miles to get to where I am just to pick up this book for $2 because it's like brand new condition. Yeah. <laughs> Police stations. Um, <laughs> Use that police address. Yes. That's how Carrie uh, found her entire book collection, like 500 historic romances. Oh, yeah, that's great. Marketplace. And I've been to her house and saw them organized by alphabet. It's glorious. It is glorious. Damn. I thought it was Craigslist that she got that off of. Yeah, oh, I maybe it was like, something like that. Yeah. I didn't even know people still use Craigslist, to be honest. I got a bookshelf off of Craigslist. Yes, I did. I got a bookshelf off Facebook Marketplace for $10, too. And they were like, we'll deliver it to you for free. And I'm like, do it. Come. Come to my house. Let's go. <laughs> they, brought it, they brought it to my door. It was That's beautiful. the only thing I don't like about Facebook Marketplace is the whole thing where, like, you have to meet the person most of the time. And that just... Me. 
<laughs> no, I, I watch too many serial killer documentaries for that. You're not coming to my house. Yeah, I keep, <laughs> Enough telling, my years. I keep telling my manager, just like, hey, be right back. Just got to go meet a stranger on the road. He's just like, yes. stop, Lisa, stop. I don't want this to be used as evidence that, like. <laughs> All right, guys. agrees with me. <laughs> We're over an hour, and I think it's late for you Eastern Standard Time girlies. Yeah. So thank you guys for joining us. This live show was chaotic, as it always is when it's on my channel. <laughs> um, we'll be more organized and less crazy on Jessica. <laughs> Month. <laughs> Money, I'll be Money. my husband. <laughs> like, Stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Bye, guys. Bye.